Alrighty, people, I just wanted to have a real talk here, you know, nothing too fancy, unscripted, you know, maybe some gameplay in the background, a little bit of that Mojo Jojo fever going on with the lo-fi hip-hop music cranking into your stereo mix. I wanted to sort of talk about a subject that has been kind of getting on my nerves lately and i wanted to give my full opinion on this so bear with me is going to be either long or short depending so i wanted to ask a few questions here those people that are damage controlling and putting certain gameplay premises on pedestals like the movie like cinematic experience where you're mostly spent walking to the next section you're not really in control of your character you're mostly spent watching hour long cutscenes seeing your character do wacky things in the cutscenes you know all this sort of exposition stuff and your controller is flat on the floor i wanted to ask people why do you not think this is a valid criticism if a game like that scores a 90 or 100 on metacritic why do you think that movie like presentations cannot be criticized why do you think these movie like presentations are perfect oh i know why it's because there are folks out there that like to damage control that are easily entertained by the premise of a story in a video game and they let that supersede their logic and intelligence to the point where they are saying dumb irrational things that make no sense let me break this down for you cinematic movie like games are not perfect and i'm saying this as a person who thought the last of us was decent did we really need those sections of gameplay that broke up the pacing with Joel or Ellie pushing around planks and ladders and pushing around this and that? I know their story context to the fact that Ellie could not swim, so Joel has to get the plank, but I was done doing this like five or six times, maybe like four at minimum. So I'm like, is this really fun? What is that specific breaking point in monotonous gameplay for you that breaks the pacing and you ask yourself, is this really fun, what I'm doing? Am I just really setting up ladders? Am I really setting up planks? Do I really need to see a long cutscene of an enemy dropping down from a ceiling? Do I really need to see a quick time event of finishing off that enemy with no control? And do I really need to see a long force walking segment that takes the controls out of my hands? The answer is tried and true. No, I don't really need to see this. In fact, I think it would be great if more video games would focus on the premise of me delivering the final blow to this final boss that's not a fucking quick time event i would be more thrilled if my skill actually defeated that enemy as opposed to waiting for a cutscene to finish to end his ass like I, I don't understand why people think these games are perfect because they are far from perfect and they are prone to criticism. Like I said, this is coming from a guy who enjoyed The Last of Us, even The Order 1886 to some extent. Now, do I believe those games are perfect? No, especially in The Order's case, it's not perfect. One entire chapter is basically a cutscene. That's bad. In The Last of Us, like I said, the pacing is a little bit all over the place you know there are some things you're doing where you just have way too much downtime before you get to the next inevitable segment of fighting against a hunter or clicker faction and honestly the dlc had a better premise of pitting the three-way threat together where there's clickers hunters and you and they're all interacting with each other which i hope comes back for last of us part two but once again once again taking control away from the player this is a big factor to me i love the idea of a story being conveyed that i'm actually sucked into i believe that's great i believe that's something that everyone wants and who, who would who would oppose this no one right but and let me clear my throat here because i've been yelling the entire time but do i really want the idea of control being taken away from me in those pivotal moments where you're living the experience it's a video game after all right video game so 
you have control over some of these pre-scripted actions you can either choose to die you could either choose to go in a different direction control is what matters in video games discovery secrets weapons items combat all of this stuff is fundamental to a video game a cutscene to me should be second nature but the story being good should be first nature. You should have, ideally speaking, ideally speaking, you should have a mix of both good gameplay and a good story, bar none. And if you can't have one over the other, then obviously I'm going to pick the gameplay being better than the plot itself if you can't choose anything else. Like, Devil May Cry 1 didn't have the best plot. And arguably going back to that game is aged horribly, but for the time it was a fun experience. People like all these games like Bayonetta 2 and I played a little bit of Bayonetta 1 and the story was just something to move the plot from point A to point B. Now that can be criticized, yes, but I don't want to spend all my time just watching a cutscene. I believe that the experience of movie-like quality games started with Metal Gear Solid 1. And once again, if you're going to be critical of Metal Gear Solid, Kojima is the master of fucking cutscenes. I cannot stress it enough. There are times where I'm sitting there just watching and waiting for the cutscene and the Kodak conversation to end. I think that developers, they decided to take the influence of the movie-like cinematic quality game and implement it in their game, but sometimes it equates to even worse gameplay on behalf of Western developers. The, for the most shit that I can talk about Metal Gear Solid, at least they have interesting gameplay to them. I will not lie. I like the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 1. I like the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 3. They reduced the number of cutscenes in Metal Gear Solid 3. And Metal Gear Solid 2, for the time, it had a great mindfuck story. I will not lie. That being said, a cutscene within a cutscene within a cutscene within a cutscene supported by mediocre gameplay. Like, I want to save my thoughts on this for another video, but God of War 2018, I have a lot to say about that game versus the older games in the series because I believe that the older games had a lot more tighter and cohesive gameplay mechanics to them that was fundamentally engaging. In God of War 2018, Kratos cannot jump, he cannot do air combos, he cannot do all that crazy wicked shit. He only has like two main weapons with the axe and the blade of chaos that is regression right regression is the idea of going backwards instead of forwards we've taken two steps forward with the presentation and we've taken like 11 steps backwards in terms of gameplay for god of war and this is what i'm talking about when games like this they get a 94 a hundred people held them as masterpieces now you can like what you want i mean i do the same shit i like what the fuck i want i am a pretty self-serving individual right at the same time if you don't look at the flaws of something at least then you're not being you know critical at all you're not pointing out the flaws so these flaws can be fixed in a possible sequel and i apologize for the children screaming outside hey it's cold what are you going to do kids are going to play like i said if you don't call out the criticisms then people will roll with the same tried and true gameplay formula and not fix the issues god of war they needed to fix the camera the fov is far too up kratos's ass so i can't see what's behind me or to my side at all and i don't like that premise i don't like the controls being taken away from me when i'm trying to kick a boss's ass it's like that sense of satisfaction that sense of good satisfaction is only fulfilled when i can beat a boss or enemy with my own skill set on my own merit with the tools that the game presents to me when the game takes that away from you when the game makes everything a cutscene it becomes less fun sure the story can be good but the quality of the story can also be be over exaggerated it could also be ham-fisted at the same time 
oh my god i don't understand how people don't get this premise that a review score does not mean that games like this are foolproof the birth of the quick time event i forget which game this started in dragon something i know it was like an arcade game dragon's lair i think it was something lair but the birth of the quick time event was revolutionized and popularized once again in shimu which came out in 2000 for the dreamcast this basically involved you pressing a button to press x and not die once again interactive cutscene they decided to do this as something to involve the player with the cutscene actions i will admit the latter is interesting where you can make something different happen if you decide to fail a quick time event and i kind of wish failure was implemented more into certain story branches like certain branching stories like true crime streets of la where if you fail to save your brother kerry kang he dies in one sort of thread and you have to go through nick kang being like a vengeful cop stuff like that is unique and interesting however at the same time i don't like constantly pressing x to die because it can be a little bit ridiculous resident evil 6 let's talk about resident evil 6 doing this so wiggle sticks the game where you're constantly forcing your thumb to rotate back and forth and all this shit pressing l1 and r1 to climb constantly over and over and over and supposedly capcom thought this was fun they thought that climbing a rope with l1 and r1 was a fun premise it was even harder in the original releases of resident evil 6 before that rope section was patched like i said i do not mind fun mechanics that could turn into something fun later like branching story paths quick time events like this you're not really doing anything but just tapping a button and hoping your character is not killed in a very ingenious or lame way i don't get why stuff like this is praised constantly praise just I, I love these quick time events i love these force walking segments where i can't really do anything and they need to introduce the enemy yeah it might be cool for like a second whatever let me fight them oh i gotta finish them off with a quick time event okay sure 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 you know in older god of wars i can argue that you know ripping an enemy's guts out that was cool they had that sort of flashy factor whatever the fuck you know right so then you get to god of war 2018 and they take more of the control away from you and it's like you don't even see as many quick time events or death scenes as the older god of war games so it's like a little bit tame in comparison even though they have gore and you can strip the wolver down to like half his fucking self when you pull his skin off it's still something that i wish they could have worked on or added more to instead of taking more steps backwards with the gameplay it feels like god of war 2018 you're just walking around and that's sort of like the norm because they introduced rpg mechanics to the god of war experience uh like i said quick time events are inventive it's just some flashy shit that you see for five seconds and it's over and when there is an overabundance of quick time events you just get fucking annoyed especially if the animation has become repetitious itself and you're just seeing the same enemy die in the same cutscene over and over and over uh now we're gonna get to the main crux of this sort of rant that i have here and that is people who dick ride and put certain games on pedestals because they are held as masterpieces look every game every movie every sort of event is always going to have an opinion whether you like it or not and everything is mostly subjective it's based on taste personal preferences etc so i'm gonna give my opinion here on this Number one, I think people are basically inflating their ego if they think that all single player games are perfect and even masterpieces are perfect because if you look back at that game, some games are hard to play after a certain time that was a masterpiece back then. It might be hard to play now. They might have certain values and conventions to them that make the game 
kind of bad you know what i mean it means that we don't have that constructive criticism to have that improvement in the future of said game if we don't focus on the problems and like i said god of war 2018 it has a shit fov that needs to be fixed if they make a sequel against thor because i don't want thor putting his fucking hammer up my ass and i can't see him behind me I don't get these people that say this and they want to change the entire review landscape all due to some Metacritic bullshit. Fuck Metacritic and fuck you. I don't believe that there should be this sort of fucking overhyped garbage when people say any game that doesn't get a 90 or above is trash. Once again, we need to go back to basics again with review scores. Once again, below 50 you know all that shit that means the game is bad it's garbage it's unplayable it's broken 60 that's an average game to me 70 slightly above average 80 great game has flaws 90 amazing has some minor nitpicks but i enjoy it and a 100 i'm questioning that score because it's probably going to be a 90 or an 80 to me if i'm being serious because nothing is ever perfect and when people put that prospect when people put that notion into their minds that something is perfect and it's not perfect and it has some problem then the problem is there and it shouldn't be glossed over it means that the game should be good enough but that problem persists and like i said this overhype of movie like games compared to other games that have real death real mechanics real innovation to them i believe that the cinematic force to walk experience should be on a lower level compared to a game that is deeply mechanical in every possible way and resembles an actual game and if it has a story that's good but i'm not gonna put the story over the gameplay ideally speaking it needs to be fucking both of these features to suck me in i can't be just sucked into a story and then i realize that i'm playing a fucking shitty game that has like bad mechanics to them because i'm going to say hey this has a good story but the gameplay is awful cool story bro i'm gonna finally watch this on youtube i don't need to play it that's how i feel about something like that i'm gonna be perfectly honest i kind of feel this way about most telltale games because i don't feel inclined to buy them they're mostly just point and click adventures no gameplay substance to them you're looking for items that's it that might further the case that's something that i'll watch on youtube i don't really need to pay twenty dollars i really don't need to pay forty dollars i really don't need to pay $60 for a telltale game in my opinion oh man we haven't even gotten to some of the hot takes people had with Red Dead Redemption 2 when someone I don't even consider it a hot take I think it's cool criticism when someone said that rockstar games you know red dead they do some things like the micromanaging of skills trying to make the game super realistic you gotta take a shower you gotta eat you gotta do all this stuff you gotta do self maintenance it is not fun from a gameplay perspective i dropped points down in my review because they had that and realistically speaking they also said that rockstar games they have all these cool unique games these cool unique ips but red dead redemption 2 really didn't feel like a game that evolved the open world from a gameplay perspective because arthur morgan felt like he slogged through molasses and i kind of agree with that to some extent i'm like the perfect rendition of red dead redemption 2 is going to be on pc at 60 fps when the aiming is better because there was a lot of issues going on with the aiming mechanics and while i got used to it over time there was no denying that compared to something like max Payne 3 Red Dead Redemption 2 is a step back in terms of shooting mechanics. I did feel like those opinions were kind of validated that Rockstar really didn't enhance the open world formula. They just added in a lot of realism, which for better or worse, really didn't make that game perfect to me. That's why I gave it an 8.8 .8 because it's not really perfect. Also, more of this force walking thing, force scenario thing to hear a character talk. Let me run around in my encampment, goddammit, while doing half of the stuff. I think if people were more honest to themselves and more honest in the reviews and how they weigh things, then there wouldn't be all this discourse about review scores and cinematic games being the norm these days. Let's face it, people. 
we're living in an era where the cinematic like movie game is getting a lot more credibility is what's popular in the streets right now understandable fair enough if you like that game if you like those type of games more power to you however speaking like i said i i need i'm a gamer i i need i need the gameplay i need the core gameplay to be present even i can admit that stuff like metal gear solid 3 i'm glad they scaled back on the cutscenes. i'm glad they focus a bit more on the gameplay they started to make things a little bit more optional that's how it should be that's how all video games should be you should get the tools provide it that are deep mechanical and fun and use them against the enemies in the game that are deep mechanical and fun and you're not actually watching all of these cutscenes you're interacting in the experience and more games need to do that have something fun or thought provoking going on during the gameplay during the cutscenes make it short and sweet don't make it drastically long and don't rip controls away from the player unless it needs to be a point where we, yes we have to convey something that's fine we have to convey this it's the only way the person and can move on to the next segment and make it interesting but if you keep doing it every five seconds that just makes a bad game to me i'm sorry i would not put that game on a pedestal over games that have critically renowned gameplay to them this is renegade operative signing off and uh man i i screamed like about two times in this video and i lost my voice reasonably so too but i really wanted to sort of convey what i was thinking at the time and you know it's like there's nothing wrong with great storytelling in video games i mean i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying that the way these games are designed each and every time and when these stories out here when these stories appease certain people to put these games on pedestals over very very deep and diverse games Play that gives you hours upon hours of content just figuring out new stuff even you know stuff like re3 stuff like dmc stuff like mgs3 even where the gameplay is deep and they give a lot of optional choices for people who want to divulge in kodak calls and they have shorter cut scenes and stuff like that you know just more options like that if if there was some sort of middle ground where i could skip all this exposition and not be forced to watch it then that's cool but if there isn't an option to really skip this exposition like even god of war 2018 when it first started there are some sections you can't skip even if you have the cutscene skipper now that was patched into the game later it's like do i really want to watch this do i really want to engage in this the second time around on my second playthrough i already seen it so do i really want to do it again mandatory cutscene mandatory force walking segment that stuff really just kills it for me in terms of replay value and i just prefer like a lot more of a deeper emphasis on gameplay i do believe that last of us part two is enhancing the gameplay i like that you can crawl now it's like like I said it's nothing new to the stealth action formula but it is nice that the game is doing that and I believe they are doing the delay it's delayed like three months later so cool if the game is great I will say so if it has problems I will say so the only thing you could do is be genuine and honest about it because like I said no game is perfect none zero zip nada there's always going to be a problem i find sooner if not later sometimes it happens later than sooner and i'm going to talk about it because that is something to discuss that is something that helps sequels get better anyway i'm signing out hopefully you guys enjoyed this video 20 minutes long from the waveform it seems let's fucking go let's get in there deep fucking discussions no more 10 minutes motherfuck that anyway i'm out see you later follow my social media and once again peace out